Okay, round two. Let's see if we can get something done. Took a little bit of a nap. Had some breakfast. Time to wake the F up and get some painting done. If you saw me this morning, you know what I was working on, some Hungarian spearmen. Girls are awake, so now we can talk at a more uh, enunciated voice and uh, with a little bit more energy and maybe I can keep myself awake this way. <laughs> All right, let's tighten that up and yeah, let's get it started. Let's get these guys done. Now, I think this uh, dried out a little bit, so let's, uh, let's add some more drops of this stuff. Working on the the tunic here of this guy. Let's see where we left off. This guy is, they all have the base color, I think. And this is the one that was completely, I thought it was, compl I thought it was completely done. That's not completely done. We need to bring that up some more. I could tell you I was just falling asleep. So that, uh, that is not a work complete situation. So. Mm -hmm. I don't think I even made it to the base color. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to get all kind of I think was the one that, whoop, this is the one I should have been using for those kind of details. All right, so let's just go to the, this straight base color. Let's thin it down a little bit. Oh, yeah, we didn't come to this color yet. I mean, I was really out of it. Let's see if we can pick up where we left off here. There we go. Yeah, don't paint sleepy, folks. These fibers are behaving weird on here. One of these bristles in particular. It's casting a, catching a bunch of paint. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let's um, let's clean this brush up some. This is a good brush. And well, that's in the wrong place. I guess that's what happens. I talk about some items and then I bring them out and I can move them in places where they shouldn't be. I'm gonna take this brush, get some of this brush cleaner. Clean 
this guy out. This stuff works well, but it's not an it's not a quick process. I'm gonna leave this guy over here. Let's put him somewhere else where he's kind of resting. And let's see if we got another candidate meal out. Uh Huge. I just can't see that from all the way back here. Let me uh, let me open up the last pack I got of these things. in the fridge maybe I didn't have it I left it for you love you too baby oh. all right let's see what we got here candidate wise this one might be okay This one might be okay too. Like I said before, the brush size doesn't really matter. This happens to be a 10 0 round, and this is a 10 0 liner. But I don't know if I could even tell the difference between either one of them. So that's what we're going to do. Is sometimes you get one of these, it's like a one, and it works just as well. Um, it just depends on the shape of the brush more than anything else, the tip. And sometimes one that's a little bit bigger is actually better because it uh, holds more paint. So you're not having to go and get more paint every time. So, all right, let's, uh, let's do this. That was my daughter that wanted to rest of the coffee that I brought back from breakfast so said yes you have it I've got extra from laying around here okay those two brushes look okay let's try them out these are El Cheapo Chinese brushes and they're like 40 cents a piece so if some of them end up being duds it's not that deal it's still a hell of a lot cheaper than a ten dollar brush but you got that one we kind of reshaped her so we'll leave it alone for the time being in the hell were we we were doing the tunic of this guy this is the this is a figure from essex miniatures and then their Eastern European range, the EMED figures. There we go. Let's get some. Here we go. The EMED, Eastern, I believe they're under medieval. The medieval heading on their site. And um, these other guys I did were right next to them, either 40 or a 41 or 42. I think these are considered guys that carry pavises, but I don't know, they're that much bigger than a regular shield, but yeah, they're pavise shaped. Uh, 
but they paint up really well. I can't tell how what their vintage they are, whether the, the castings are, I don't know, 20, 30 years old or what have you, but they paint up very nicely. And we're just doing this uh, uh, light gray tunic. Uh, it has a little bit of a brown. I would say I would call it a brown gray as opposed to a blue gray. And um, okay, we've got that. We've gone to the the whole color here, and let's go with a little bit of white and then brighten that up some. Okay, that one's done. Let's grab the next candidate over here. A little too watery. Sometimes when you leave these paints, and you close this uh, wet palette and you come back to it, sometimes the water has kind of floated to the surface and made the paints you have here more watery than they were when you left them last. So, but um, most of the time that doesn't happen. But occasionally it does, so you just got to be prepared to kind of mix them up and they kind of separate on the palette. So we're going to do the tunics now, finish all tunics, then uh, <clears throat> then we're probably going to go ahead and do this, the steel helmet, and yes? Can you hold something really fast? What? Can you hold something really fast? What, what do you need? Oh, put the, putting that on? Okay, I'll be right back, folks. I need to get some ice anyways, and uh, I will be right back and grab a couple things here that I needed to get anyways. This can you give me a hand with this? Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back in about five minutes.
Okay. All right, back with uh, motivational uh, juice, even though it's not juice at all. Motivational cold coffee bean drippings. Okay. I see that we're both back. <laughs> yes. Let's see. All right. Yes, I had the Deuter that needed me to help her put a, uh, what's those things called? Things you put on the back of your phone where you can grab it and with two fingers and it doesn't fall. Pop socket. I have a pop socket put on there, so. She needed my anal retentiveness of centering it and so forth. I figured, well, I needed to get some more eyes for this coffee anyway, so. What the hell was this about? Okay. All right, back to the tunics. So uh, the other day, Tuesday, uh, Marty brought over some other figures to see if I could use them, my Hungarian army, and I could. I didn't really do an unboxing or anything. So I've got some other figures here I could use for crews or the wagon crews and stuff like that. And um, you know what? I'm going to sidetrack myself and show you guys. Trying to do stuff to keep myself interested. Let's see what we got here. Man, this chair likes a bitch a lot. Oh, I just put these on the, on the other cardboard that I had. I moved them off to the side. Let's see, what do we have here? We need some other hand gunners, but these are really for the... Yeah, I've got, I've got a set of these guys here. These are very... I've got a set of these, and this, and this, and this, but these four or like for the Polish war wagon. Maybe there's only three of them. There's only three of them, these bearded dudes. These will fit on the on the Polish war wagon, which looks a little different. And um, we're gonna do something new with these guys. And that's uh, when we end up painting them. Of course, the, uh, the Hungarian ones were already based in, in black. Uh, we're gonna pop them off these stands. We're gonna glue them. They're not gonna be, they're not gonna be on this uh, on this thick thing. We're they're just gonna have the two feet, and I'll glue the two feet in there because they shouldn't be uh, um, messed around. And uh, let's see, they shouldn't be in a position where they're gonna get messed with. Oh, oh, hello. They shouldn't get a lot of damage and stuff. Um, I don't want to see that big part on the bottom of their base. It just looks dumb. I know some people do that. and They put them even on chariots and stuff. But you want to take that stuff off because that looks kind of silly. So, um, I think. And then what else should we get? Uh, I would have a fan on. Any little thing that catches air just really goes over which way. We got some of these, some of these Moravian style lancers from the Hussites. These are minifigs. And these are kind of early minifigs because the lancers are pretty bendy, but we'll end up replacing the, we'll cut them off and then drill through his hand and put thin lances. Those guys, what else? 
the guy we have here. Oh, here's a here's a guy with a Pavis type shield. Also minifigs. Here's a guy that looks like uh, is, it, is it Ziska? It has the eye patch. This guy even has an eye patch for the uh, for the Hussites. I'm not going to build a Hussite army, but uh, I'm kind of keeping the command pack. Another one of these guys. Um, and then a bunch, a smorgasbord. Uh, I noticed these guys, I thought these guys were Middle Eastern. But this is like from a big grab bag that he had. These are actually Roundway, and they're the Hindu. They're Roundway Hindu guys. Well, they got kind of an interesting shield. I was thinking they were like from their um, Granada range. But no, I looked at the, up this code. RKH5. It's Hindu horsemen. So. That's some of those guys. But this is... Uh, Where's these guys that, that could use in the, the Hussars? Oh, no, I can't find the darn guys. But they definitely need the, they definitely need the, uh, here we go, these guys right here. They definitely need their lances replaced because they're, this is old school lead. See, look, just trying to pull up on, bam, just breaks off. But these are small. I'm going to have to use like the thinnest pins I have. But this is totally those uh, Hungarian type Hussars. So we can put some guys, we can mix these guys in with uh, these folks here. So that'll be good. We got some of those cavalry. And uh, yeah. There's some other ones as well. Not sure who makes these. Uh, looks like the code 68XC. I'll have to find out. These looks like that's that's a minifigs type code. These guys. What? All these older figures, man, they paint up really, really nice. You don't have to go and buy, you know, the the latest and the greatest Kurosan miniatures because they just came out. Nothing against Kurosan, but you know, you can't just keep constantly keeping up with the Joneses. Just find figures that work really well and paint them up and they paint them up, they paint up really nice. Here's, uh, here's some other guys, we'll probably use them as allies. I believe these guys are um, uh, Wallachian cavalry. So uh, the Hungarians can have the Wallachians as allies. So that's a, that's a, that's a good fit for that. So anyhow, we got lots of different things here so uh, I also picked up some of these guys he had uh, he had all kinds of stuff but I wasn't going to grab stuff I wasn't going to use anytime soon these guys are old Mike's models Renaissance range and these are the Dallas guys and Dallas guys are uh, um, they're guys that, that the Ottomans used and they're kind of shock light cavalry they had feathers and stuff on here. Um, these Mike Models castings are kind of stumpy, but, oh, and these guys are uh, light cavalry in the, uh, so they'd be based two guys to a stand in the Ottoman army. They're, um, they're Balkan troops, and um, they fought alongside the uh, Ottomans. And um, they're Delis or Delai, and, uh, they, they like feathers because they're all feathered out, you know, but these are nice, uh, these are nice figures, so at some point I'm going to get back into doing the Renaissance. I've already started playing some of it. I know I've mentioned to you guys a computer game called Pike and Shot by Matrix. Uh, is it Matrix? Slytherin? Slytherin. I get those two companies mixed up. I'm not sure if they're related to each other. But they have similar type of games, and uh, yeah, I've been playing that a lot to kind of get uh, back into, not a lot, but uh, you know, when I don't feel like playing, painting, might even do some today.
just to kind of get in the spirit of things. So, <sighs> anyhow, as we were. Make sure this is set to that. All right. Okay, this guy's completely done. This guy is the one we're working on. Let's go ahead and add more. Add more to here. some shadow so damn much and never used to do that truly really strange If you guys get a better view of what's going on here than that. Let's go. Why did this get on Lucy? I'm telling you, painting is easy. Getting this camera where it needs to be is a pain in the ass. <laughs> That's the hard part. Painting, painting's easy. <laughs> right? It's backwards, I would have thought. Hey, I have more experience painting than I do, uh, you know, screwing with a camera angle and so forth. And the thing is, is I can't check it out while I'm painting, you know, because I'm, I'm painting. I, I don't know where it's uh, focused. So hopefully we can, I think if I completely go, then you might be able to see me. But other than that, it keeps me out of the picture. Hmm.
right? So we can go to pure this, pure core color. Okay, camera angle's good, yeah. I wish I could just keep it at the same thing, but you know, I just, I can't leave it. It's, it is my phone, so when I stop filming, I have to take it up from where it's at, so. But it is nice that um, it didn't, this this mount really didn't work over at Mitch, and so that means that the, I'll leave the mount connected here to my, my painting table, so. One less I can, thing I can forget to bring over there. And I didn't particularly want to render the tripod that I had useless and uh, after I got this. So this keeps me using both. Use this one here and the tripod over there, over there. So, and like I mentioned earlier, we should have some filming tomorrow, which means Wednesday or uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, it should be up. And we have a theme night, looks like we're gonna have four players. So that's what it looks like though. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, best laid plans and uh, two extra people show up, but we should have uh, some filming done on, that's a little bit of white, on uh, tomorrow night. Just a little bit lightened up, not a whole lot. I'm telling you, if I was a superhero, I'd be the yawner. I could drink the blackest coffee in the world and still yawn. All right, let's move that guy to the side. Move on, work on the third guy. Okay. You're working on a Hittite game for my camp. I was gonna say like the one in Berlin, but that's Assyrian. What is that? That's actually a, is that a reproduction of the one that's in Berlin or they took it from the Middle East and brought it in or, I guess I haven't really looked into that because 
I'm not uh, building an Assyrian army, but uh, Mitch has that one of those the Ishtar gate that somebody had made at a convention and was selling uh, camps, and he bought that camp and he uses that for his Assyrians. I believe that's the Ishtar gate. <sighs> Think it's a Sumerian or something like that. We only steal the pest. <laughs> like, shh, don't tell anybody that it's here. <laughs> The only still the best. Yeah, yeah. British were usually there first, yep. Yep. Uh, a couple of notifications up there. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Okay. Should you care, we have a moral tower in Berlin right in front of the Brandenburg Gate made of captured French cannons. I'm surprised it did take them back after World War I. Captured from World War I or captured from the Franco-Prussian War?
French cans. They didn't want him back. That's like admitting it happened. <laughs> you want your cannons back? What cannons? The ones we captured. You didn't capture any cannons. <laughs> Dreamer. <laughs> let's get a let's get a new white out here. Struggling to find. Is that? Oh, this is a. Is this white? No, this is some off white type color that's. The label's almost rubbed, rubbed off of it. It's like an elf flesh type color. Franco Prussian War. They gave them to us after a cavalry asked for them. Huh. Ulans. Ulans. Franco-Prussian War. Hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't, I don't know much about that conflict. I know that uh, it was the French that attacked, surprisingly. Napoleon III, I think everything he stuck his nose in, he, he got his nose cut off. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. glad the traditional hatred between Germans and French has been properly buried. We still make jokes. Has it? That's good. What about between the French and the English? Who won the Tour de France in 1939? Oh, shit. Well, I know who won it in 1940. It was what, the 7th Panzer Division? <laughs> Rommel in the 7th Panzer Division, or so the joke goes. The 42 Panzer Division. You wasted your typing. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard it before. But that was in 1940. Who won the Tour de France in 1940? Rommel in the 7th Panzer Division. <laughs> I don't know if he was the one that did the big push, but... Uh, uh, he did an outer encirclement or on that. One of the favorite scenarios I ever played in Advanced Squad Leader. It was a double-blind scenario in 1940. It was French and Germans, and there was a little town there. And double blind, meaning there was two sets of boards. There was a GM running between tables going, you see this, you don't see that. What do you do? That kind of thing. 
Um, who did I play? The Germans or the French? I think I played the Germans. I played the Germans. So I remember there was a, a couple of Char Bs in a village. And I had an ammo truck. Got a half squad of I forget what the ammo truck was there for, but I had nothing I could deal with a Char B with. I took the ammo truck and drove it right next to the Char B. And Char B went and shot at it and it blew up and blew the Char B up with it. So like the only way I could take it out. So um, we didn't die in the truck though. We got out of the truck, but anyhow, that was, I forget what it was. That was my, that was a, that was an interesting game. Probably would have been Guderian. I have a pan manual and infantry training written by Rommel after World War One. Yeah, because he was over there in the fighting the uh, fighting the Italians in the Alps. So yeah, you could see why he didn't like the Italians too much in the Second World War if he had to fight them in the first one. So. It's a challenge to read because it's written in the old German script. It's a challenge for me to read in the new German script. Times prepared for the wrong war before 1939. They were swept to either fight the Austrians in the Alps or the Abyssinians. The bridges in those areas were not strong enough to carry heavy tanks. Yeah, the thing with the Abyssinians, I, I'll never forget the whole, those tank cats, that those L3 tank cats were the, the, the natives would hide around and they would ambush them and they'd take them and flip one of them over and there was no escape hatch. And the guys inside the tank had a two tank, two, two man tank had <sighs> the size of a go-kart. They just flip them upside down like a turtle and they would just roast in the sun. At least that's what the story was. That's what the stories were told in the eighties. So might be different. It's one of those things you remember, so.
Mm. Man, how many more times am I going to yawn? Gee whiz. I'm drinking iced coffee, but apparently I'm immune to it. I'm trying to avoid taking a nap, but I don't think that uh, I'm going to be able to get away with that. I think I took one for about 30 minutes. Four minutes. I'm gonna go back off again. I, I need to. I need to get a refresher or something like that. Wake the hell up. This isn't working. I, uh, I feel like I've been hit with a tranquilizer dart. So we will catch you guys next time. <laughs>